Welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Today we have a Google Sheets file that can help you manage your yard. And here in this case I'm looking at a container yard. So it's a very simple file but you can use this and add more layers to it and custom fit it to your needs. And I want to show you how I did it so you could do the same for your needs. So in this case, in this, in this file we have three different sheets. We have the menu sheet which is the main interaction sheet where you can use to update um, your yard. We have a database, which this is where the information is stored. And we have a dashboard that you can build on the da database and it could show you some information. So there are two buttons here, one called update, one without a name, but it's a trash can, so it means delete. And there's another um, code that runs whenever you change the container number over here. Every time you change the container number, a code will run and show you the get in, get out, pick up date, stack, row, and level basically coming from here. And if nothing exists, it will just leave it blank. So before I go forward with the um, details and how this is all built, if you enjoy the content, please hit that subscribe button uh, and be sure to check out other videos I have on my channel. So let me just show you um, what happens if I put a container that doesn't exist, like number 99. So everything is black. Uh, if I put 123, then I get the information. So there's an update button. Like if I want to change the stack to 30, I'm going to click on update. This will update the line over here. Okay? So if I now go back to 9 and one, two, three, it remembers, or it's updated, so it's gonna pull that information. The delete, that's gonna delete one, two, three out of here, and now it's gone. So now the next time I click one, two, three, I will not see anything here in the details. Okay, one, two, three. It operates whenever there's a change. So if I have key in the same number, there's no change. Uh, on the right side, you see also added here something nice that shows you the existing containers. So you don't have to remember what's there. And this should not be a drop-down list because if this if it's empty, like one, two, three, I can now um, key in the data. So let's say it's today, and this is three more days from now, and this is five more days, and this is 15, five, and C. Now when I click update, it will add a line, and you already see it over here, but it would add a line over here. So how does this work? So everything actually happens, it's a combination of a nice, simple code, app script, and some uh, nice formulas that I have over here. And you see I, I hide these um, columns just because they're not... Um, user-friendly, so to speak, and I don't want someone to mess with them. Technically, you should probably also block them. So this is just a simple index match looking for the container number. So if you're not familiar with index match, index match is a combination of, think of it as a combination of VLOOKUP and age lookup. So you can also find the column and the row that you're looking for. So it's looking for the combination of container number one, two, three, and a column called gate and date which is exactly what I have over here. So technically it's always going to show me the combination of container and um, whatever uh, field I want to see. And if, as you see, if error, if there are no, if there, it doesn't find this container number, it's going to return a blank cell. There's the last line, which shows me what is the last line in the database with a simple count A. It shows me the container line. So it finds this number, so this is number six, and you can see there's an if error because if there's a new container and I want to update, I want the information to be saved in line number seven. And finally, for the range to copy, I have the same data showing here, only transposed, so I can easily, it's just for easy, ease of coding. So whenever I run an update, I'm just going to copy 
the data here and paste it in the database. Okay, let me show you how this looks um, in the um, app script. So if if this um, this is the first time you've looked at app script, it's um, it's different than VBA. If you're used to VBA, there's uh, quite a lot to learn and, and, and to understand, but there's a lot of different sources online that I recommend that you check and learn and work with it. So this part I actually found online and made the adjustments to match my um, uh, needs. So there's a function called trigger on edit with the an E and then it then it uh, calls for my function search on update passing that E. Uh, to be honest, I'm not 100% on what this does, but I just uh, found that if I um, adjust it to my needs, it works perfectly. So basically, this is supposed to run only if you are in the sheet called menu and you're changing cell number B2. Otherwise, I just found in the beginning, it really gener it, it ran the code all the time and that's not what I wanted. I only wanted to run when someone changes um, specific cell, specific um, sheet. And of course, you can adjust it to a range or whatever you want. And basically, um, as you can see, there's an if for this function that if the sheet check and cell check do not um, return a null because this is this uh, equation, um, then, then run the function called search, which this, this is a function I created. So it's also a simple function. There's um, um, defining the spreadsheet, a few parameters that I use, because I use this in a different um, file, so I already copied it, no point changing something that's already working. So I have the source, which is um, over here. Basically, it's this. Let me just show you like this. This is the source. And this would be the destination. So that's all it does. It takes the source from row, from column. So row number three, column number five, one, six rows, one column, right? So this is column number five, row number three, six rows, one column. Copy and paste that over here. Um, the only difference is now I change it to column um, number two. Okay, over here. Everything else remains the same. And I have this that basically copies it and pastes it by value. So that's how the search, and in and, and, and the beginning I had a search button which I could click and, and uh, run, but I felt this is much more user friendly to be uh, run on uh, whenever the change is made. And just to show you how this works, there's triggers which is very very nice feature for Google Sheets. You click the alarm clock called triggers and you will see that I have a trigger over here. Let's show you. Uh, basically I'm calling for that function that you saw in the beginning. Trigger on edit. Um, choose head from spreadsheet and select event type on edit. Basically uh, notify that that's for me I don't even look at that but yeah that's that's how you need to set it up. And that just means that whenever there's a change, that will um, trigger uh, this function, which triggers this function, which sometimes trigger the search. So that was the search part. Now we have the update and delete, which start very similar. Um, so the only difference is, and is that um, you know, both of them are looking for the uh, define the uh, sheet and. Um, um, database and menu from the um, from the menu uh, sheet I'm taking this number so I understand which line to delete okay and all I'm doing is delete the row so it's very simple I have the the uh, sheet itself I have the row number and I just tell the the code to delete the reason I have the max here is just for my you know, building of this, I did want to have a case where I accidentally delete the first line. Okay, so that's the reason why there's a max here. So it has to be at least two. The update row is very similar here. 
um, you take um, the the, uh, the container line that you want to update. It's the same uh, field, and similar to what we had before, we copy and paste, but here just between different sheets, and um, and of course I'm taking the the data from here transposed so it just looks it just is a very easier better code to use that's regarding the codes here the, uh, the other thing that I did here which is very useful I maintained the, this these headers and these headers as formulas that connect over here so if you want to change one of the definitions like you want to call this product then everything will still work because this will be product, this will be product, and this will be product. So that's always good to do something like that because you don't know exactly what the names of the fields will be. Um, let's do that. The picture is just a picture so it looks a little bit more nice and uh, so you understand the scope. The existing containers list, that's very simple. I'm using sort and unique. Unique on this column, that's going to give me just uh, one value. I don't want to see anything else. And sort, so I just see it sort of descending. That's supposed to help me understand if, if which containers are available. And um, that's about it. So if you like the video, please subscribe, like it share with your friends, leave a comment, and I will see you next time. Take care now.